Hello, good morning. Welcome to Joy News. That's where we're coming to you live from our studios in Kokomo, we on DTT because we're free to wear. Coming up this morning, government commences negotiations with private entities to take over bill calculation and debt collection for the electricity company of Ghana amidst the energy crisis. In the meantime, mm. I agree with Rankin that something should be done about the collection of um, revenues uh, uh, by ECG. That I don't want. Meanwhile, some players in the space are opposed to privatization of ECG's operations. Also, this Blue morning. Barack. It's finance. And finance is in two sides there's finance to run, and there's finance to earn. Now Koromo reunited with her family after she was allegedly married off to the Bobulomo of Mungwa. Thus, the child will be reunited with her family today, 18th April 2024, after the parents have signed a bond. We're live in that community for some reactions and beware of the floods as the rain sets in because government says it is helpless in fixing the perennial problem. We don't have all the resources. We have to make a case for the resources. We continue to make a case for the resources. We would also tell you about the Sag Levy housing project as government assures transparency and diligence as it paves way for the private sector to take over projects, hinting more than $100 million is required to make the place habitable. We don't have all the resources. We have to make a case for the resources. We continue to make a case for the resources. Many thanks for choosing us. My name is Aisha Brian. Do stay for details. Government has commenced negotiations with private entities to take over the bill calculation and debt collection for the electricity company of Ghana amidst the energy crisis. This move comes as authorities strive to prevent the collapse of the energy sector and maintain the cash flow system, given that over 30% of energy losses are attributed to non-collection of debt and power theft. However, some players in the space are opposed to the privatization of ECG's operations. Michael Ashali has more from our thought leadership discussion on guaranteeing reliable power supply. Meanwhile, part of the capital went dark again last night without notice. And in uh, the Institute of Engineering and Technology, Ghana says engineer Michael Riafe, the Ashanti East General Manager of the Electricity Company of Ghana, caused no ethical violation in a recent disconnection exercise he carried out in his operational area. The Ghanaian engineer was arrested for allegedly causing public unrest after a disconnection of power supply to the Kumasi Technical University. Since his arrest, the Ashanti Regional Minister, Simon Osei-Mensa, has come under criticism from both the groups and the Public Utility Workers Union. The latest to join in the condemnation is the Institution of Engineering and Technology Ghana, which says it considers such developments an attack on the engineering profession. The arrest of Ashanti East General Manager of the Electricity Company of Ghana, engineer Michael Wiafe, after a disconnection of power supply to the Kumasi Technical University, is beginning to draw more backlash from professional bodies. The members of the senior and junior staff unions of the Electricity Company of Ghana, together with their parent body, the Public Utility Workers Union, are demanding an apology from the Ashanti Regional Minister, Simon Osei Mensa, who they accuse of masterminding his arrest. The latest to join the condemnation is the Institution of Engineering and Technology, Ghana, which says it considers such developments as an attack on the engineering profession. Henry Kojo Boating is president of the institute. You know, they, they, yeah, the engineer did not violate any uh, ethics. He, he did not. Uh, you know, it's a, a public institution, um, and uh, uh, the board of ECG 
take decisions um, for the directorate or the management to implement. So it was a decision taken by the board, and we have heard on a on, on number of platforms um, the, the, uh, the managing director, uh, Mr. Mahama, when he disconnected um, parliament and he was asked, he said parliament uh, was working and ECG2 was working. Yes, so it is the work assigned for them to do, proper work assigned for them, a legal work assigned for them to execute, and they were executing it based on the decision of the board and the implementation, implementation by the management. Uh, the ECG engineer at, at Kumas uh, would have been an expatriate. The regional minister will not do what he did. Yes, I, I, they have to keep recognition to our own because uh, a, a, a regional engineer of his caliber work with experience, uh, you can't demotivate him like that, just calling for his arrest. It's uncalled for. As a professional body charged with training Ghanaian engineers and experts in the technology space, the Institution of Engineering and Technology is also urging government to consider policies that will create a more conducive environment for Ghanaian engineers. Uh, that's why Engineering Council is there. Uh, we don't pamper engineers. If you do something which is wrong, uh, we have our ethics, Yeah, you can be reprimanded. Um, as well as we also protect our own um, so we are assuring all engineers who are doing the right thing, uh, we are fully behind them, we will support them, whatever they do, provided they are doing according to the ethics of engineering. Yes, so we fully support them and we encourage all those who have interest in engineering to pursue it. Because for the development of the uh, nation, we need uh, more engineers. The engineers that we have are not enough and we also appeal to government to deliberately um, put a policy that uh, engineers in Ghana will be used or will be put at appropriate positions. Government says now Okromo, the teenage girl who was widely speculated to have been married off to a 63-year-old Babuulomo of Nungwa Numu Bokete Lawe, the third, the third was uh, reunited with her family yesterday. Addressing the press on latest findings, Minister Designate for Gender Dakwan Newman established she is 15 years old and medical checks indicated she was intact. Kenny JC was there for joining us. Gender Minister Designate Dakwan Newman said Nakromo will be released to her family by the close of today, the 18th of April 2024, after the family was made to sign a bond. I would like you all to know that the medical assessment on the child, it indicates that she's not pregnant and she has no immediate health concerns. Now Okromo's date of birth, from records at her creche and her primary schools, she attended indicates that she's 15 years old and she was born on the 18th of July 2008. The child will continue to pursue her education and the Attorney General has issued an interim report which is dated 18th April 2024 and has advised that in the best interest of the child and in accordance with section 2 and 5 of the Children's Act the child should be released to her parents pending their complete review of the docket. Thus, the child will be reunited with her family today, 18th April 2024, after the parents have signed a bond. Chief Tansy Minister Stephen Asamoah Boatin also confirmed that 15-year-old Na Kromo was never married to Gwabu Wulomo per their investigations. She wasn't married to the Gwabu Wulomo. It's a, it's a ritual. Uh, which she has been initiated into it at, at age six, and so she was focused on it. All they did was to elevate her status to a queen mother um, of that deity. Uh, so there was no marriage. Meanwhile, Deputy Attorney General Alfred Tuayabua says the Attorney General's office is still reviewing the docket of this case, and no conclusion has been reached yet. Marriage or not, we have not come to any conclusion on that issue yet. So the officers in the ministry are reviewing the docket 
and when we come to any conclusion on that issue, it will be made known to the public. From the Ministry of Information, Kenneth Jesse for Joy News. Welcome back to Joy News. Let's, let's go back to our earlier story where government has commenced negotiations with private entities to take over bill calculation and debt collection for the electricity company of Ghana amidst the energy crisis. This move comes as authorities strive to prevent the collapse of the energy sector and maintain the cash flow system given that over 30% of energy losses are attributed to non-collection of debts and parties. However, some players in the space are opposed to the privatization of ECG's operations. Michael Ashali has more from our thought leadership discussion on guaranteeing reliable power supply. All eight guests unanimously agree that the primary challenges contributing to the country's unstable energy situation were revenue mobilization and difficulties in procuring and distributing fuel efficiently. Energy sector faced two main challenges arising from forces external to the sector. And these were, one, lack of inadequate and secure quantities of reasonably priced fuel for power generation, and the lack of adequate public funds to finance the sector's investments requirements. But we need to take another but look at the finance. I don't have a problem. I don't think we'd be very it. prudent yes, with the financing exactly. of the ECG. Okay. There have been instances where monies have been diverted for other purposes. And so we need to critically look at that. We are managing ECG financing like a chop bar type of accounting. But, but the overarching challenge there is finance. And finance is in two sides. There's finance to run and there's finance to earn. I would have liked a situation where we are today with all the institutions, let's do an audit on all of them. Even the former Deputy Energy Minister, Andrew Ejapomesa, agrees with them. Truth be told, uh, we've had some maintenance issues, uh, some of which have been resolved, uh, some of it is ongoing, and we had some challenges with fuel, which, fuel, which on a daily basis, depending on uh, you know, uh, uh, what is available, then determines uh, but, however, he maintains that the primary issue lies in fuel procurement, attributing the erratic power problem to the ECG, which is currently grappling with overloaded transformers. So the fuel being expensive is, is true, uh, but I don't see, still don't see where that personal interest arises. Mm. The outages numbers, mm. right? 85% of it is ECG problem. Okay. It's not grid coal. Mm. It's not the generation problem. That's only about 15%. The data that I have seen. So you see clearly that if you are relying on ECG system for a certain kind of industry that requires power 24 hours, tendency for you to want to go, especially if you are a bulk mm. consumer, to go directly to get from the generator is high. Ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee, John Jinapo strongly believes that if the current situation persists, the energy sector is headed towards collapse. IPP is a little over 1 billion, we related expenditure, almost 800 million. So today, if you were to flush out the energy sector debts and bring the books uh, to a healthy path, you will need about $1.8 billion dollars in order to deal with energy sector related debts. And so the bills are compounding and it's threatening the sector. Look, my worry is that if we continue on this trajectory, mm. in one year time, the sector will collapse. Michael Nyantichi, General Secretary of the Public Utilities Workers Union, contends that over the past few years, the ECG has made efforts to enhance its revenue collection. However, he alleges that both the VRA and Greco have collaborated to lure away some of their major dependable customers who typically pay for their electricity they use, thus disrupting their revenue targets. ECG puts in a lot of effort and everybody who wants to be objective can attest that for the past almost two years, 
the effort has been made to enhance the revenue. Then there are also this subtle uh, thing being played out between Gridco and VRE, where because of the some loophole in the law, mm. some key customers of ECG are being poached. And these were customers who could pay easily and contribute towards the cash waterfall. But Welcome back to Joy News Desk and uh, you may have followed uh, the uh, measure of the movement of for change and the Ghana interest movement plus other political and pressure groups who have come together to become an alliance and their aim is just to break the monopoly of the two major political parties, the NDC and the NPP. I've been joined in the studio by the leader for the movement for change, Alan Kwejo Chairman Ting, uh, for more on this. Good to have you here. Thank you and, very much. Uh, I've been seeing you going yeah. around the country yeah. and selling your message to them. Yeah. How has it been? How is it going? Well, it's going very well. Um, this gives me an opportunity to make a, a, a slight correction. Correction, okay. Um, the alliance is not a major okay. of the constituent uh, political entities. Okay. It's an alliance. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not a major, each of the constituent or mem each member of the alliance mm. would keep their own identity okay. as a political group, will keep their own symbol, okay. but we all campaign as a group okay. uh, for the general election uh, okay. in December. But you and, will and, lead them. Yes, okay. and they've also agreed as part of the arrangements, the alliance arrangements, for myself to be the presidential candidate. The so alliance. they've endorsed, the alliance partners have endorsed my candidature to become the presidential candidate. Okay. However, and they of course all campaign mm. uh, for me, but they will keep their individual identities. Okay. And the second uh, slight correction I wanted to make also uh, is that they've, we've come together, yes, to break the duopoly. Yep but also to do different uh, things. Okay. One, clearly, is to go beyond the duopoly mm -hmm. because we believe it's not held uh, our political dispensation. Mm -hmm. But we've also come together uh, because we all believe that Ghana uh, needs to have transformational policies okay. in all spheres of national life, mm -hmm. in the economy, um, in health, in education, in energy, in governance. So all these uh, sectors uh, of our national life. Okay. And they've agreed, as the alliance partners have also agreed, that they will use the great transformational plan as the blueprint uh, for the alliance and by extension to fight uh, the general election. Okay. Thirdly, mm. they've also, or we've also all agreed that we'll put the private sector as the center of our uh, development agenda. Mm. And not just the private sector, also to put youth and women mm -hmm. at the center of development. Okay. And then uh, there's two more that we also believe, all of us believe, that we have to work towards a government of national unity, uh, a more representative government than mm -hmm. we have now, a government that would include political parties, but would also include other interest groups like the private sector, the uh, faith-based organizations, uh, and then other groups. Okay. And then, of course, we all also agree that there should be a mindset change and uh, attitudinal change in Ghana. 
All right. So how many um, pressure groups or um, well, groupings, interest yes. groups have joined the movement so for So right change? now we are nine in all. Nine in all. Still counting. Still counting. Yes. Tell, tell me about these groups. Uh, we know about the Ghana interest movement. So there's the national uh, movement. interest movement. Okay. Uh, there's the uh, union government. Okay. Uh, led by uh, Mr. Kosi Adai, otherwise ODK. known as ODK. Yes. Then we have the National Green Party, okay. uh, led by Reverend Ayesu. Mm -hmm. Then we have the, uh, the group, uh, the, it's called the GFC, mm -hmm. the Ghana uh, First Coalition, okay. led by uh, Bishop, uh, uh, Bishop Mensah, Sam Mensah. Then we have the uh, Alliance for, corrupt, uh, movement for Corruption, Fight, against corruption. corruption yes and we have uh, so we have different uh, groups yes. who have joined nine in yes. all nine in all okay yes. and uh, I'm, I'm quite interested in the fact that they would all still belong to their groupings yes. and yeah. still believe in their ideologies yes. Yes. but the you become an alliance yes. Yes. why did you choose to go that path because yes. usually a, an alliance who yes. have agreed to make you the leader yes. that means they believe in your transformational yes. agenda Ab absolutely. and they must fit into it yes. Yes. so yes. you do things together yes 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 yeah so i mean how does this work that they will still be in their own groupings yeah. and then uh, they still believe in your transformational agenda. Well, that's the interesting part of it. And it shows you that it's not a marriage of convenience, okay. but we're all fighting for a common cause. Now, so they are working uh, to ensure that Ghana has A, B, C, D. The things that I talked about mm -hmm. is the same thing that I'm talking about. Okay. So it doesn't matter uh, that they still keep their individual uh, identities. Once we are talking about the same thing, then my understanding is that they believe that they are not necessarily subordinating their uh, interests uh, uh, to the movement for change, okay. but they are collaborating and working together mm. to achieve the same uh, objectives. Okay, so uh, they will still also be using their symbols they'll and still not use their the symbols. butterfly. Yes, they will still use their symbols, um, but we would have a joint campaign team. But on the ballot, on the if ballot, you are yes. leading them, yes, there must be the butterfly. Yes, there will be the butterfly. Wouldn't that create confusion for the electorate? Yeah, okay, who, okay. Uh, UG yeah. will be campaigning but, to yeah, them yeah. with a different, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, uh, what's logo. No, and then you have movement for interest yeah, also, yeah. interest movement yeah. also campaigning with a different logo. And then on that day when they go to the polls, they see butterfly. So they will be confused. Well, I'm happy that you're actually thinking through this properly. Mm. The agreement is that because we have one candidate contesting for the presidential election, right. that candidate being Alan Chamatin with a butterfly would signature, contest with a butterfly symbol. Mm -hmm. And so everywhere we go in our campaign, that is the message okay. that Alan is the candidate and he is contesting on the ticket of the movement for change and okay. the symbol is the butterfly. Mm. But we are supporting him. We have endorsed his candidature. Okay. So even though it may sound confusing, mm. actually it is not. Okay. Because all the alliance partners are saying that this is our candidate, this is our leader, and vote for him. Mm. So once that is explained in a joint campaign, I believe that uh, that confusion will not arise. Uh, obviously, I can understand why people may think that, well, it will be confusing for voters because we are talking about an alliance, uh, but we are talking about a movement. That is why if you look at the alliance uh, symbol, 
it is not a symbol for purposes of contesting the election. Okay. But let me add that the individual alliance partners can determine to field independent candidates in different constituencies. Okay, so independent that's for the, candidates for, that's the, for the what, parliamentary? For, 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 for the parliamentary. Okay. Yes, for the parliamentary. Okay. Because there are two elections, parliamentary and, and presidential. presidential. Presidential, they've all agreed they are one candidate. Mm. But in terms of parliamentary, we all also agree that we would work together to support any uh, individual nominated by any of the partners to contest for a parliamentary uh, seat. Okay. So, for example, if... Uh, what's your constituency? Um, we are not sure. O no, Okankwe <laughs> no, South. South, Okankwe yes. South, yes. yes. So, for example, if uh, NIM, Abu Sakari's team, is interested in putting up a candidate to contest the Okankwe South seat, mm -hmm. all the alliance partners would support that candidate just like they are supporting Sing. the presidential candidate. Okay. And in actual fact, if you take the NIM, Abu Sakari's uh, group, they were established specifically to identify potential parliamentarians. Okay. So in, in that case, if they put up an independent candidate yes. who uh, will be supported by yeah. the alliance, yeah. what symbol then yeah. will appear on the ballot? I think you are trying to paper. get onto my cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> because you are, you are thinking through <laughs> very uh, uh, systematically and structured uh, Maybe so, you make me your <laughs> gender minister. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, so, that, uh, in that context, the independent candidate is supposed to run uh, uh, with a symbol. Okay. So that symbol... Uh, does not necessarily have to be the symbol of the NIM. Okay. Because, you see, the NIM is an entity. Okay. They have their own symbol. Mm -hmm. So they may support an independent candidate who would have a different, who may choose a different uh, symbol. Symbol. Yes. Okay. Yes, but would have the I, support of the alliance. They will have the support of the alliance. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. so there's a difference between the symbol you use and the type of support you receive. Okay. You know, but according to the provisions of the uh, political party's decree or, or act, act. Uh, you see, you cannot, two people cannot have the same uh, symbol. When you register a symbol, mm -hmm. it is exclusive okay. to you. Mm. So you may find that there will be different symbols for the different independent candidates that are supported by the alliance. By the alliance. Wow, that's that's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'll see. I want to see how that <laughs> work. works out. Oh well, so Okakwe South, mm -hmm. NIM Abu Sakari's movement, movement decides that they are interested in Okakwe South. Okay. Now they nominate a candidate. Mm -hmm. We have agreed that all of us would vet the candidate to ensure that we are supporting the right candidate mm -hmm. and the candidate who will win. Okay. Once we agree that that's the right candidate, You're going with then he or she would register as an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. But because that individual is an independent candidate, you cannot say that you are representing NIM okay. because you are an independent candidate. candidate. Okay. You know, you are independent. So you register, it's your name and the symbol. Okay. But you have the support. You have the support. Of the NIM or the alliance and, in general. NIM and the alliance in general. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's talk about your transformational agenda yes. and how these other nine groups yeah. can fit into, into it. Yes. Because yeah. if yeah. they're all still doing yes. yeah. their things, Independently, independently, how do, then do they fit, fit into in. your transformational agenda? So they agreed that they will adopt the Great Transformational Plan. Okay. The Great Transformational Plan has 15 pillars. Okay. On the macro economy, mm -hmm. on industry, on trade, 
on agriculture, on tourism, on infrastructure, uh, health, education. 15 transformational policies. Now, so we've come together as an alliance and they have agreed that subject to the necessary amendments being made, okay. they would adopt the Great Transformational Plan. Okay. So they have the flexibility now to add and subtract to the Great Transformational Plan. Add to but you see, and subtract yeah, means that... Means that, let's say, if we take inflation, mm -hmm. we have about four or five different policy solutions right. in the Great Transformational Plan okay. that will reduce inflation to single digits. Right. So ODK, as part of these consultations, has already agreed, because that's the basis for them, that they would accept the, the basic Great Transformational Plan. Okay. But they may decide that they may add one or two other policies that may still help reduce inflation. Okay. Yes. So mm -hmm. we all share a common uh, plan in the Great Transformational Plan. Mm -hmm. And that is the blueprint that we are campaigning uh, with. So it's not as if each alliance partner is bringing their own plan. Okay. The Great Transformational Plan has been adopted as the blueprint being presented by the alliance. Okay. Okay, yeah. that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, yeah. let's look at the um, 15 pillars. Yeah. And let's start with the macroeconomic bit. Yeah. I mean, we, we all know the times in which we are. Yeah. Uh, what, what is your plan yeah. uh, with this 15 pillars? Yes. What, what's your plan for the transformational agenda? Okay, so if you take the macroeconomy, which is pillar one, yeah. um, there are policy solutions on how to reduce inflation. Mm. There are policy solutions on how to uh, reduce interest rates. There are policy solutions on how to manage our debt so that we have sustainable debt. Mm -hmm. There are solutions about uh, tax and tax reform. Mm -hmm. There are solutions about revenue, how we optimize our revenue. Okay. And there are solutions also in respect of making sure that we control our expenditure. Mm. So the difference between a plan and a manifesto, which is what the parties present, okay. is that I will reduce inflation. Mm -hmm. But they don't give you a plan to reduce the inflation. Okay. I will bring interest rates down. Mm. But there is no plan that people can interrogate mm. that this is how you are going to reduce inflation. So, uh, that is why even for two dominant parties that have been in power for 32 years, you, you know that they are now putting together their manifestos. Yes. You are aware. They yeah. set up committees to put their manifestos together. Mm. But we have a plan. Okay. We already have a very comprehensive plan. Mm. On, on the economy alone, we have 100 and 52 different policy solutions. Share, share some of that with me. I well, mean. so for example, one of the biggest challenges that we have is on taxes. So tax reform. The reason why Ghana uh, has had challenges in terms of uh, being a competitive economy mm. is the fact that our taxes are too high. If you look at, uh, let's say, duties and taxes on imports, you find that over f you have almost like 55% tax mm. if you add up. Okay, but, but on the bit so, about yeah, taxes, you've yeah. been trades minister yes, for yes. such a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You didn't see anything wrong with that yeah, but trade ministers until don't, now? Trade ministers don't fix taxes. You are a cabinet minister. Yeah, I'm a cabinet minister, but 
You see, everybody has their own responsibility. Mm. Now, I can make a recommendation, but the final decision on taxes would come from the Ministry of Finance. Okay, did you make that and, recommendation? And oh, but we've been talking minister. about this. Yeah, because my interest, for example, is reduce, to reduce taxes. Try and understand the logic. Okay. I'm Minister for Trade and Industry. Right. My objective is to have taxes reduced mm -hmm. so that my companies will become more competitive. True. The interest of the finance minister, mm. admittedly, would be that I want more revenue. Okay. So if in his own thinking, mm. he believes that he can only raise revenue through taxes, mm. then we would have divergent opinions mm. about taxes. Did, did you make that oh, recommendation? That, did we, you raise oh, it yes. Even at for your President meetings? For first time. Mm. I, did, I mean, but this is very... Uh, obvious, and uh, I feel that the way we've structured our economy with high taxes, it will always create a problem in terms of how competitive we are. Uh, but you also know that if you have high taxes, then we have high inflation because the costs of production when you have high taxes, mm. means that your cost of production will be high. Okay. If you have high interest rates, it means that your cost of production will be high. If your cost of production is high, you pass it on to your consumer, so it will reflect in inflation, which is the, 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 the level of prices in okay. the economy. Mm. So everything is interrelated. Okay. If you don't have a stable currency, your inflation would also go up mm. because if right now, as we see, if the city depreciates mm -hmm. and you are importing goods, it means that you need more cities to, to a, dollar. a dollar. And once that happens, then when you import goods, it means that you, 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 you have to reflect the depreciation of the city your prices. But if you agree that um, the trade minister wants yes. to reduce yes. uh, taxes to yes. get the companies functioning yes. properly, yeah. Yeah. but the finance minister wants yes. to raise revenue, yes. I mean, how would it work in your government? Because yes. you oh, would yeah. also be crying now for revenue. Now you are really competing for your because... position. <laughs> oh, yes, I have to. <laughs> so, it's very no, important. No, no, but you see, but that's the tension that you always have. Mm. So the way I would deal with it is that that is why Alan has to be president. Okay. Because, you know, industry, trade, all over the world, that is the engine of the economy. So if you have a president who understands mm -hmm. industry and trade, right. the economy would work. Okay. That is why if you look at the most powerful economies of the world, they are also the most industrialized. United States. China, Japan, Germany, France, Korea, in that order, Brazil, the top 10 economies in the world also, are also the most industrialized. So you need somebody sitting there at the top who understands the connectivity mm -hmm. between taxes, um, interest rates, uh, industry, trade, mm. and all that. But these countries you've mentioned have yeah. also not uh, um, taken out the taxation part. Yeah. They also pay high taxes. Well, you see, but it is on direct taxes. There are two types of taxes, direct taxes and indirect taxes. True. Direct taxes are taxes like income tax and then corporate tax, companies, what companies pay and what individuals True. pay. But almost invariably, in all these powerful economies, they make sure that the indirect taxes, which is the taxes and duties on imports and levies and things like that, are significantly low. Because once you do that, then you make your companies more profitable and competitive. Mm. Once they are competitive, then they will expand production. If they expand production, it means they will employ more people. 
Okay. When they employ more people, then what do you think you are losing by way of the reduction in taxes? Okay. You will gain that through direct taxes, that's income tax and corporate tax. Okay. Let me delve into yeah. the running mate conversation. Yes. I mean, now uh, the NDC has their running mates. Yeah. Uh, MPP is yet to announce uh, uh, their running mate. Yeah. What's the agreement to choose a running mate from the alliance or, I mean, what's the arrangement? Well, so the arrangement is that we are focusing on the presidential ticket because that's what appears on the ballot paper. And that's where the controversy normally is. But once, the, as Alan's partners, they've all agreed that Alan becomes the candidate, the presidential candidate. The choice of the running mate will be decided by all the alliance partners based on certain considerations, criteria. Mm -hmm. We'll all sit together and then determine the criteria for selecting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the beauty of it. Because it's the same way that they all agreed to uh, one person becoming the candidate, even though they were all going to contest as presidential candidates, mm. which was a more difficult task. Mm. In my view, selecting a vice presidential uh, candidate would be much easier. Okay. But it means that it will be a decision of all the alliance partners. And you've not made that decision no, yet? No, no, we've not made. You know, because we just launched... We've just launched the, 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 the alliance. The, the alliance. Okay. So we'll make that decision. But all of us have agreed that we don't need to focus on that. The important thing is to get our campaign uh, moving. Are you saying that the vice president is not really important in no, this it, whole it, election? It's, it's important, but the alliance partners feel that having a candidate and having the alliance uh, being part of a joint campaign, those are more critical than rushing to select it. But we'll get there. We'll cross the bridge when we get there. <laughs> when, you, see, when, you, see, you want me to put up your name for consideration? <laughs> <laughs> if you join up our front door, no, no, I, 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 can, I can say, OK, <laughs> this is my proposal. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, but one yeah. other. Um, issue that yeah. has come up because if you become president yeah. um, the constitution makes arrangements for you to p choose a percentage of your ministers so, from parliament uh, yeah, yeah. how do you intend to cross that bridge well very easy because we are working towards a government of national unity a representative government a government that would have um, i would say members from the ndc from mpp from the smaller parties, and also members from the business community, from uh, the traditional authorities, from different interest groups. Yeah. Now, in line with the constitutional provision of selecting 50% of ministers from them, it means that those who are represented in parliament, including also independent candidates, will all get the opportunity to be part of our government. Okay. which is different from the current dispensation. Okay. It is most unlikely in this dispensation where you have this duopoly that an NDC government or an NPP government will appoint an NDC MP as a member of the executive. Okay. You, know, that's, you see, but the point is that this system is not sustainable. It means that whether you are the right person for the job or not, once you are not part of the ruling, uh, uh, gov uh, let's say, the ruling party, there is no way that you have the chance of being. But is that sustainable? We've done this for how many but years that's now? Exactly the point. Since 92? And, and, and this, so that has landed us where we are now. Okay. So I can tell you, this new system, this new political architecture that, that you I'm are bringing okay. is going to be the game changer, not only for Ghana, but for Africa. Okay. So it means that right now, you select a president not based on uh, the, 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 the existing parties, 
but based on his or her individual record. Okay. So that that ind independent candidate who becomes president mm -hmm. now has the flexibility to choose his ministers from any political party. So are you likely to choose oh, from both NDC and PP? But that's, that's part of the concept. But they have different ideologies. No, but you see, the point is that, let's really uh, be frank about this. Okay. The ideologies that we pretend to have, is that why we follow? I mean, if you look at the MPP in terms of our policy architecture, We've introduced, since Kufor's time, we've introduced more social interventions than the NDC, that is a social democratic, uh, I would say, uh, party. That's the NPP. I'm saying the NPP has introduced more, more social, social interventions, interventions than okay. the social democratic party than the NDC. Mm. The NDC, admittedly, has also undertaken some very significant uh, uh, policy interventions that would more or less be aligned to a capitalist uh, uh, ideological orientation. So you are in essence so, admitting yeah, that all the these fine things you're they, talking they, they, about, no, if you become president, it, it may not be so. Yeah, no, uh, because the point is that you are, if, if the the president has won the election on the, on the basis of a plan, mm. which is the Great Transformational Plan. Now, if I pick somebody from the NDC, I'll pick somebody from the NPP, who are parliamentarians, they are coming to be part of a government that is executing the Great Transformational Plan. So they will drop their NDC, MPP ideologies and follow your plan? Well, but the point is that we are talking about focusing on Ghana, okay. what to move Ghana forward. Mm. And the majority of the people have determined by voting Alan Chamartin as president that they believe in this great transformational plan. All right, so, so we, so we, we are it, running out of time. Let me ask you just one critical question. I mean, um, we are in yeah. a, an era where everybody is complaining about electricity, yeah. uh, uh, erratic power supply. Yeah, yeah. What's your plan? My, my plan is that in terms of infrastructure, so not just energy infrastructure, road infrastructure, real infrastructure, sanitation infrastructure, Government cannot and will never be able to provide the resources to fund the development of infrastructure. You see, this mindset, which has existed since, I think, independence, that government has to build roads, mm -hmm. it has to build schools. Okay. It's not sustainable. I'm, I'm talking so about I'm saying that, uh, uh, power supply, no, no, so it's the same which, which has been I'm a problem power for years it's a question, now. Yeah, it's, it's infrastructure. Okay. So I'm saying that my policy is to have the private sector finance infrastructure uh, with support from government. So if you take the energy sector, for example, the challenges with the power supply comes from three different components yeah. of the energy sector. Mm -hmm. One, generation, two, transmission, and three, distribution. Yeah. Now, so if you look at generation, for example, now government has taken on the responsibility, unfortunately, that they have to borrow money to install uh, generation infrastructure. Do you agree with those who say ECG should be pri privatized? Uh, absolutely, because it's the same principle. Uh, government has tried to run ECG for many years. It has not worked. It is not going to work. Right now, we are having challenges also because our transmission infrastructure is obsolete. So it's not just the distribution ECG. It's also the transmission. We need investment in the 
The government does not have the money to invest in new transmission infrastructure. So it only is common sense. So the way to go. The way to go is, is to ask the private sector to step in. To step in. I'm afraid that's all time will right. allow us. I'm grateful for okay. your time. Uh, Alan Krejo Chairman saying he's the leader for the movement for change, the Afa Franto Party. And I'm happy that uh, we sat. I'm grateful for your time. Viewers, see you again at 12.